Today I want to talk about Jimin talking about his goals as an artist and what he's scared of and everything we need to know. I also want to break down and talk about the controversial reaction to Set Me Free Part 2 and break down the music video. We also have YouTube deleting some alleged views. So hey dumplings, it's Dave Desai. Hit or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Grab your dumplings, hit spring book merch, and let's go. Jimin is doing a lot and really making a huge splash. It looks like he's being pitched to all the big media companies and magazines. And it looks like they are very excited to have him on the covers and do interviews. It looks like his album is set to make a splash in the US. And once the release of the song Set Me Free Part 2, there seems to be a lot of people ready to work with him and promote it. Vogue Korea was one of the first and they released a very exclusive interview to talk about Jimin's collab with Taeyang for Vibe and also his recent work and also his brand endorsements. Of course, the topic of Jimin's solo work came up and people were very curious what it looked like given he has very captivating visuals and is a great dancer. The videos have got to be very visually pleasing and beautiful, which I will talk about later. Back in 2018, BTS did their idol performance and Jimin had this show with his fan dance performance and people thought it was breathtaking. Of course, situations like this lead people to believe that Jimin's solo work would be so beautiful. Jimin during this interview talked about being a pop artist that is both good at singing and dancing, but wanted to be good in a diverse amount of musical genres. So not just sticking with pop or contemporary, but even going with older styles and music that BTS fans may not be familiar with. However, Set Me Free is definitely more pop. Jimin also talked about how over the years he learned that it's not healthy to aim for perfection in everything that he does. And I agree with this a lot. In the beginning of everyone's career, and I mean within five years or more, it's perfectly normal to have this mentality of go, 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 never sleep, keep going. But once you reach maybe the 10 year mark, that is naturally the time people slow down. And then usually they look back and see how unhealthy the first five years or so were. And then you get people saying, if I could do it again, I wouldn't. But the bottom line is if they didn't work like how they did within those first five years, they would not be anywhere near where they are now. Working 12 to 15 hours a day is quite normal for people starting out on their own career in entertainment, business owner, or freelancer. And those who don't put in the work will often get eaten out by the next hungry person that is willing to do it. I've experienced that in my life tenfold, especially in entertainment. As you get older and you make enough money to retire, you can afford to slow down. You can take an approach that is what Jimin said, more sustainable. Jimin also talked about when the members went their separate ways, how anxious and terrified he became. But Jimin still looks to them to find strength and when he looks at the other members becoming strong and creating good music, it inspires him to do the same as well. I think it's interesting how every member had the same story when making solo music, that they were anxious and scared to do it on their own because they liked working on it with other members. Members. Having a support system and a team is very important. It's good to have a collective group of people with the same mindset, goal, and people to bounce ideas off of that may not put the entire pressure on yourself. And it's difficult to find people like that. BTS members are the only people who would be honest if something sucked or wasn't good. While there's a possibility that Jimin's team, not BTS, would very much be yes men. And you don't want yes men on your team because they're fake, obviously. Set Me Free Part 2 is definitely an interesting song with some very much mixed reactions. I do get into the song and react to the song on Patreon, I give my reaction to each scene and shot, and of course, talk about my opinion of the song itself. If you'd like to see that, I will link the Patreon in the description, and we do have a $1 tier that is currently open, so I hope to see you there. Armies, if you didn't know, typically have view goals that they try to achieve when a music video drops. The goals are fairly realistic, and of course, with Jimin, it's going to be set high. Set Me Free actually ended up trending at number one on YouTube at the time of recording, and that is one of the highest achievements you could get on YouTube. The view after only about 10 hours or so, got 10 million views, and everything was great. However, armies noticed that about 5 million of these views were very quickly deleted after the 10 hour mark. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. Deleted views come from various situations and scenarios. Many fans think it's simply a glitch and YouTube is just cruel or I've seen racist, but that is not true. Let me start by breaking down why views are important on YouTube and why if it's not counted properly, it could result in YouTube being sued. Imagine you are a company like Pepsi and you want to run ads on as many YouTube videos as you can. So the ad you see on any video or in front of a music video, wherever you know where you can find ads, for every 1,000 view that a video gets, Pepsi would have to pay a specific amount of money just to reach you or reach a new audience. That money goes to either YouTube entirely or if the artist is part of the YouTube partner program, half of that money that is paid by Pepsi will go to the artist and the other half to YouTube. That is what AdSense is and most people are familiar with that. What they're not familiar with is how much the brands are paying for the ads in front of a video. 
And if Pepsi is running a campaign of $10 million across millions of videos, but half of those views on the videos are fake, then Pepsi can sue YouTube for making Pepsi pay $5 million for fake views and to reach fake people. So YouTube has to remove those views on the view count so Pepsi won't have to pay it if the viewers are fake. Of course, we can definitely assume that Jimin does not have fake views on his music video, but what qualifies as fake views? If you watch a video more than once by hitting the replay button, that would qualify as fake views because you're not a new viewer. You're the same viewer on the same video and so the same ad playing would be unfair for the advertiser to pay to reach you again. So what you can do to get around this is simply watch the music video in its entirety, go watch or stream another video in its entirety. You can do that with this video again, you can do it with another video, and then go back to the music video. If you want to do this automatically, simply setting a playlist and having the music video in there and looping other videos too in the playlist, that would work. If you want to do it manually, you can just click to another video. I will link the music video in the description here so you can go right to it and stream after watching this video. You can feel free to also add reaction videos into the mix on the playlist because Google says that any video views that are accrued through videos with the song playing in it will count towards the YouTube music charts. Reaction videos are usually copyrighted by Hybe or any music label and so not only will the views count but the ad money made goes to Hybe or in this case Jimin too. But this was not the only alleged controversy that happened with Set Me Free Part 2. The song itself was generating some controversy as well. The song is very auto-tuned and people had very mixed reactions. Many people came to say that Jimin needs the tune because he allegedly needs it to sound good, but that is not true. We have heard him in vibe and he sounds great without any tuning. I do want to clarify that every artist uses auto-tune or Melodyne. This is what the technicians do. They not only use these vocal effects on artists, but they use reverb compression and many, many things that layer on to vocals. Nowadays, especially if you can hear the tune, it's likely a stylistic choice rather than needing it to sing well, because technology has gotten so good that those with auto-tune, you almost can't hear it. And of course, Jimin can sing. There's plenty of videos of him singing live, but Jimin gets a lot of hate as is. So of course, people were going to take that opportunity to attack him rather than praise him. People did feel like the vocals were very hidden and lost since Jimin had a lot of it tuned and a lot of people did not like the song. Many people were scared if Jimin was going to be upset over that since the album and song is supposed to represent a part of him and his growth as an artist. It would be difficult to not take this so personally given that it is personal, but I honestly think Jimin wouldn't be upset or cry over it. Jimin is aware that this is how art is interpreted and it was his artistic choice to do that. And he is aware auto-tune is very controversial. So I don't think he cares. You might also be wondering where the part two came from in Set Me Free, but it actually was a nod to Suga's mixtape. Suga released a mixtape called D2 with his other artist name, August D. Jimin did the song and noticed that the lyrics were actually very similar to Suga's and decided that it would make a lot of sense to do that nod to August D and said it would be cool if the song came after August D's mixtape. Aside from the controversy of the song itself, the video is extremely visually pleasing and I can't get over how beautiful the dance looks and just overall what this likely means for Jimin. Regardless of the controversy, the fact that Jimin put out a piece of his soul in the world must feel so refreshing, freeing, and nice. An artist at his level is definitely used to putting out themselves and getting criticism that is not something that most artists even take into consideration when making music. Like, am I going to get hate? Most artists might even think if it gets hate, good. That means it's getting people's attention. One of the biggest fears for artists isn't even hate. It's when people don't care. It's when people stop paying attention. So I think Jimin is doing fine and I hope he keeps going and is pushing forward. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out my Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Things is lovely comment right here. Love you. Bye.